So now we'll talk about anonymizers. And anonymizer is basically not a way to become anonymous on the internet. It's just a way to increase your privacy on the internet because you really can't be anonymous on the internet. Does that make sense? It's, I'm playing with words there, there slightly, but it was from the, uh, it, 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 it's important, it's just important to note what's actually true in this case, I guess. Um, we'll be talking about TOR, which is, stands for the Onion Router, we'll be talking about this in depth in a little bit. Uh, the reason why we're talking about TORs and not other proxies, and there's many of them. Um, the reason why we're doing that is because um, TOR is a well-known uh, anonymizer that's being used by a lot of people. Um, other anonymous proxies may or may not be anonymous and may or may not have control over who's actually using them. Uh, so as compared to other proxies which which may not be a known quantity, we're talking about Tor, which is Tor is a known quantity that's being used by educators, which is a good thing and a bad thing. And so it's really the, the one to look at, in my opinion. Um, so this is Tor's website. It claims that ordinary users, businesses, um, use Tor. Activists and media and military and law enforcement use Tor just to hide their location from casual usage. Um, that's a reasonable statement. Um, and yeah, it just it's an increased way of making it unclear as to who you are that's requesting web pages. Um, it's not really if now depending on what you actually do within Tor, someone could could if they're actually monitoring Tor's network possibly find out information about you because of the fact that a you're you're using Tor, so that makes you interesting, and b what are you searching from when you're using Tor? Uh, but uh, that's basically the two gotchas are. Um, the basic way, and I'm not going to get into too much detail because it's a lot of crypto that I do not know. The way that Tor works is you make a connection to a computer that's running Tor um, as a bridge, which is an encrypted connection. And then another, and then that computer talks to another computer, which talks to another computer that your end encrypted communication uh, goes out of. So basically, the only uh, communication which is unencrypted is that last link. Um, the way that your computer knows who's participating in Tor is that there are Tor directory servers that basically list all the various ways that you can enter communication into Tor and, enter, and also other communication out of Tor, and this is needed so that so that the communication can can take place. Um, and really, if you want to know more about how to, how to do it, look at the overviews overview which Tor actually has because it's a little bit complicated as to how all that actual routing and encryption works. So Tor is a SOX proxy. Most people who use it to browse the web anonymously. However, there's now additional .onion sites, which are basically um, hosts that are only routable within the anonymous domain. Uh, so that's the other thing that people use it for. Basically, on these anonymous sites, there's the original version of WikiLeaks. There's a couple of other things which we'll get to in a minute. Um, there, a new Tor circuit, which is the path of the random computers that, that is using to you know, to have a connection to the outside internet, 
Uh, that changes every five minutes, so every five minutes it's a new path. So um, it's that's that's hard. It can be uh, configured manually by configuration options to make that longer or shorter if you want. Um, there's also a couple of other ways, which we'll get to later, which we can talk about about the other options. Yes, the old Tor circuit would be discontinued, and that's actually configured by the client and not the server. That I, I, I think it's just a new path every couple of minutes, and it, it's like I, I know that it does. Like there are times when it creates. Like if you have a web browser that's making multiple connections through Tor, it does uh, like it does create more than one connection for that traffic to go through, and um, but that's really the only time when I see that. Now the the Tor client itself on Windows or on Linux actually has a GUI which shows you all of your active uh, connections. And you can also, there's also ways of configuring your connections so that you can only exit through one particular node if that's what you want or other various ways. Okay. Yes, this is a software that you download. Um, there are also ways that you can have, there are websites that exist that, that will do, that, so you don't have to download them. Correct. The, the software don't do. Uh, that would be bad. Uh, there, it's basically a tor. Tor. To is a way of being able is is a way of doing that. It's um, you have to be really careful and know what you're doing if you want to use that safely. Uh, the reason why I say that is because there, it's you're relying on your web browser to do. Everything right, and I don't trust that. Gotcha. Uh, and, it's, yeah, and, and it's a huge attack vector. Um, there are Tor, Tor clients for basically any operating system. Uh, Tor is, is still reasonably slow, but it's not too bad. Is there a question out there? Uh, Tor technically provides for any protocol to be available because it's just a SOX client, but there is a bit of magic to make that actually work, I've found. So it's, you know, generally speaking, the only traffic that's allowed to exit Tor is just web. Uh, now, there is one particular case where they're doing some weird email stuff uh, because that was something uh, that we'll get to. Then that's something we'll get to in a little bit. Um, yeah, and Tor offers software bundles, which is um, uh, which is software that you download and you double click on, and then uh, it will bring up a web browser that is automatically configured to use Tor. Uh, ditto for the IRC client as well. So that all of your traffic will be correctly configured to go through um, Tor without any obvious links of traffic exiting through a non-Tor connection. That makes sense. Okay. Um, you can exit through specific countries. So if you want to exit through the UK, you can. If you need to exit out another country, you can as long as there's a at least one exit node uh, as configured for that particular country. Um, and not every country has Tor, but, the, but most of them do. Um, okay, so Tor hidden websites are these hidden websites that the only way they can access is um, through running a Tor client and then going to the URL which is supported within Tor. 
uh, those URLs all end in dot onion. Um, there are custom search engines. There are uh, WikiLeaks. There are some really nasty stuff uh, that are dot onion sites that are supposedly anonymous. Just don't go to any one of them because it's really depressing paths. Um, and it really is the dark side of the web. Like, edit, like if you think of bad stuff, that's probably where it is. Um, so why should I mention that at all? Because it's good to know where WikiLeaks is actually hosted currently. Uh, it's being hosted online uh, through uh, Tor right now. That would be a great brand. It's all an ISO standard that you look at. They're in the configuration file specifies it. Yeah, the reason the reason why you, you have to make a change in the configuration file to exit out a specific country or to enable the dynamic dot exit uh, thing which you can append to URLs, which basically says I want to exit through this Tor node. Generally speaking, you don't want to do that because it's a great way to attack Tor. Mm -hmm. If you know someone is going through Tor, you can uh, force them to exit a Tor node which you control. Mm -hmm. If you can force them to go through a Tor node that you control, you can basically give them some sort of attack vector or something like mm -hmm. that to further identify the user. Um, so if you are running a Tor server, the environment variable that you would see is uh, basically your remote IP address is 127.0.0.1, which is your local host. So you really don't see any any environment that the, the remote user has. Excuse me. Um, so um, other than that, that there was a web connection made and it came from your local host. So basically your Tor client is acting as a Tor server, if that makes sense. So instead of the web traffic coming out of, um, uh, instead of you making the request through Tor, it's basically the, the Tor software is accepting a request from another client. That's then being sent out through Tor to your remote host, which in this case is your local host. And then that's returned back to the original user through Tor. So that's really the only way that you can, that's, that's how the Tor uh, service works for the data on the inside. So does that make sense, generally speaking? I, I'm seeing a lot of confused spaces, so I'm not sure how I did on that. In this case, I installed a hidden website on my Raspberry Pi at home. And uh, from my Windows machine, I browsed to it, and the, the request was made from localhost because it because the actual request was made through Tor. Does that make sense? Yeah, It's it's not an exit node because local host is not a Tor exit. That you can make a DNS DNS request to a specific server that has a listing of all known Tor exit nodes, and basically, when you run a Tor client, you want to uh, know that your your uh, client is correctly configured. And the way that they do that is make a web page request to say, am I exiting through Tor? So if you're exiting through Tor, that server needs to know all the Tor exit nodes. So if you're coming from an IP address that is a Tor exit node, it would have to know that. So it also offers a DNS service to basically say, is this particular IP address a Tor exit node? To which will return you the yes or no. Yes, that's all it really means. Is that
Yes. Because uh, Tor publicly lists all the servers that are acting as Tor servers. So uh, basically, in order for Tor to function, there has to be a directory listing of uh, servers which you can uh, request a, an exit path out of to the internet. And that's how it knows, that's how that server knows um, uh, if you are exiting from a Tor, Tor endpoint or not. That's correct. Um, Tor browser is Firefox. It's just configured so that the DNS requests and also the web traffic and also FTP traffic all goes through Tor. Or maybe all proxies or all services go through Tor. It might be disabled in other services. The other thing it, it does is by default it's disable scripting. And also maybe one or two other things are available in the plugin. The WPJ, whatever that rest of it is, that was all, when you start, when you install, when you, when you tell the Tor client that you run, want to run a hidden service, it will generate two files in a directory called hidden services under the Tor configuration directory that will tell you what your public DNS name is. And then if you know that public DNS name, you can then get there. It has to be advertised in the way that people are generally advertising it is through a wiki page within the .onion namespace, which has a directory listing for everything. Um, or the other thing that people do is leave it unlisted, and that way um, uh, only people that know about that URL can actually get there. Um, I used to have a, there, there's a document in, in the document directory that tells you how to set up a Tor direct, the Tor anonymized uh, service as well. I think, and if not, it might be. Um, I need to verify that. But if you go to the Tor's webpage and type in uh, hidden services, you'll, you'll see, you'll, can read more about the hidden services option as well as um, how to configure a hidden service. Uh, it's available on their web page. Um, so if you are in a country that prohibits Tor, you can send an email to bridges at torproject.org from either a Yahoo or a, a Gmail account. I, it's one or two. It's one or two objects like that. If you visit, um, uh, um, that's so. That's another way of bypassing the people that are trying to filter you. Um, and then you configure the Tor client to use that particular bridge information. In theory, isn't being cultured. Um, this is from metrics.torproject.org, which unfortunately might are also blocked. But this shows you the number of users that are using Tor daily. And generally speaking, the number is increasing, but it's only around 60,000 people or so, or 600,000 people or so. The spikes are generally due to an event, yeah. Mm. Um, and the reason why it goes up and down is, is also because like there are filters attempts and sometimes when it's successful, you'll see the spike actually increase because the connection actually didn't, didn't occur though it, though it was attempted to occur. So that could be another reason for that as well. If you go to that website, there's ways you can filter the graph to include like political events and other stuff so you can actually see those differences. Mm -hmm. um, 
and yeah, it's that's about how many people are actually connecting. And, when, and the way that they're they're doing all this metric collection is when your client connects from connects initially to the Tor directory server, records the the country of of the originating request, and um, that's the only time logging is performed on the Tor server when configured by default. Um, Tor is available on the iPhone or on your iTouch. It costs 99 cents, and it's the 57th top utility on iTunes. So it's there are people using it. Um, the caveat there is that uh, iOS does have some limitations, which is that video requests to, uh, leak uh, information as well as JavaScript cannot be disabled. So if JavaScript is enabled, you can do certain uh, requests to basically force from the user certain information. HTML5 geolocation API can't be disabled. So uh, if you were to allow a website to um, request location information and they hit this accept, you would actually know where that user actually was even though they're using Tor. Uh, so that's interesting. Um, and on the right here, you can see the browser user agent, which comes up as an iPod. Um, and it's just the remote address, which is random, which is coming out of Tor exit router 36 of form less networking.net. It does appear to be an exit node, and it's in the United States. Uh, see also how governments have tried to block Tor, which is a YouTube video that was um, from a hackers conference in Germany a little bit back. The metrics, torproject.org website, and if you actually decide to use Tor, subscribing to the mailing list is important so you can know when new Tor versions are released. Uh, Phoenix is another operating system to be aware of. Basically, what that is is a custom configured. Um, it's two custom configured clients. Uh, in one case, it's running a server, which which is just a standard Ubuntu server, which has um, which is which is running the Tor server, and then there's a client which all of its traffic can only go through Tor. It's um, it's interesting. Um, the one thing that I like about it is, is that they do include, include a self assessment. Which is basically um, showing you all the ways that they realize that their uh, model is not perfect, um, and it does sometimes um, it does sometimes happen, but it's reasonably stable and fixed. Um, so. Basically, that's all I have on anonymizers. Uh, so we'll be talking soon about uh, just the web browser itself and email. Is that OK with everyone? OK. So we're just doing big context switch here, which is really